Yeah, I'm usually go all in. I don't like that <laughs> camping. I hate camping. I hate campers <laughs> in general. That's the people who makes me scream at my TV. <laughs> Welcome to Xbox Live Session. I'm your host, Katerina. So today's session is super special. We have country music star Kane Brown joining us, uh, whose new album, Experiment, just actually released. Uh, later in the show, we'll also have a special guest talking about the Call of Duty Endowment Fund, which supports our veteran military uh, to get high quality jobs. And stick with us until the end. We'll let you know how you can win a custom military-themed Xbox One X. Uh, Kane, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Sure. Now, it's my understanding that you're super into gaming. You brought, you even brought your own yeah. controller, which is the, the new Elite uh, white controller. It's pretty yeah. sweet, right? Yeah, my guitar player got one for Christmas. Oh. My birthday, my birthday went bad. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what do you usually like to play? Uh, I play everything from 2K to like Call of Duty. Do uh, you usually? Yeah, do you usually play with your buddies or? Yeah, we have a uh, we have like a squad that we always play with, and uh, it's just really like an escape for me mm -hmm. uh, to get away from the real world, and I could play literally 24 hours straight and not get tired of it. <laughs> Same. Uh, do you usually play when you're touring as well? How does that work? Yeah, I take uh, I take my Xbox everywhere. Got a backpack. Nice. Load it up. I think it's easier with the Xbox X because you don't have that big bulky thing mm -hmm. to carry around. Agreed. So. Pretty easy. Yep. Do you have like a full setup when you're traveling, or how does um, that work? Well, actually, my manager for my birthday got me the little uh, competitive TV. It's mm, like you put your Xbox yeah. in the case and you carry it around. So I've been using that, and uh, or I'll just hook up at like hotels with their TV. I'll find some way to take their HDMI cord out, and plug it up. That's yeah. awesome. Are you ready to play some Black yeah, Ops Four? Okay, let's do it. So have you played uh, this game mode in this game or previous Call of Duties? Yeah, this, this one. Um, we were trying to get the Easter eggs on this one. Okay. Uh, last time with all my friends. While we get started, I wanted to remind everyone that the Salute Pack for uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is out now. So 100% of all the proceeds that go from buying this pack go to the Call of Duty Endowment Fund. Uh, this fund helps support our veterans to get high quality jobs. And if you do purchase this pack on Xbox, you'll get a free avatar item in your messages. So what do you think so far about this game, since it's been released recently? Uh, this game actually got me back into Call of Duty. Uh, really? Yeah, I got loved. My favorite one of all time was Modern Warfare 2. Yep. And then I kind of got into more sports games, and then this one came out, and I just fell back in love with it, so. Uh, do you remember the first game you played? The first game Yeah, ever? the first game ever. Yeah, the first game I ever played was a game called SOCOM. Oh, I remember that. That was fun. In, and if I was to ask you, like, your, your favorite game of all time, what would that be? Of all time? Of all time. <laughs> I don't know. I know it's a hard that, was like, that was like my childhood game, and then it just completely went away. Um, but now, I mean, I would have to say Call of Duty. Call of Duty is, like, mm -hmm. something that just always gets me. I, like, I'll, I'll leave it. Because you think you get tired of it, but then you auto you automatically come back to it. Yep. Yeah, this is this is my dream come true. <laughs> Do you usually stream at all, or no? Uh, I've been wanting to get into it. I've I've got some people that I play with that stream, mm -hmm. and they've been trying to get me in it. But I'm just so busy on the road, I can't always take the equipment with me. Try it. Yeah, that's true. So. Going away a little bit from gaming, I see that on Instagram you post a lot of uh, dancing videos. What's all of that about? Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, me and my girl are just like dancing and uh, <laughs> having fun. So that's something we do just to kind of bond a little bit. So you told us about all the setup you you do take your gaming setup with you on the road. Uh, do your like do the people that you travel with also play with you? Uh, yeah, so my, my guitarist, he's, mm -hmm. uh, another, he's a big gamer. He kind of upset me because he didn't bring his Xbox to LA for some reason. Um, he thought his yeah. clothes were more important, so he couldn't pack them in the uh, bag. <laughs> but, Priorities. Uh, yeah, but I play with uh, I play with a couple people. I play with Marshmallow, 
Mm -hmm. um, we play Fortnite. I'm terrible at Fortnite, so I <laughs> played UFC. And Is Marshmallow teaching you how to play Fortnite? No, nah, everybody's trying to get me into it. I just can't do it. <laughs> I think a play session is like that's that's probably a good way to start streaming. Is you and Marshmallow yeah. just get together and do a duos on Fortnite? Yeah, be <laughs> That's pretty bad though. Twenty six headshots. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started on some classic multiplayer. We'll see how it goes. Let's do it. <laughs> you also have the Pro Controller. Yeah. I just have the basic one. I brought it from home, though. <laughs> I should have brought mine. So which class do you use? Uh, I use the, the dual submachine guns. Yep. But if I, if I get to you close range, you're not about to be me. Oh, okay. I'll probably get super distracted while playing and we'll forget to talk. <laughs> yep, I got one. There's one on the stairs going towards me. Oh, that was awful. Don't do it, don't do it. Ah! Oh, this is my first time playing split screen on this one. I, I feel like nowadays, like, games could incorporate more of, like, this couch co -ops. Like, zombies in split screen should be super fun. Yeah, zombies is usually all place. Yeah. Uh, so you just had a video uh, come out for your uh, new song, Homesick. Can you tell me more about what that video meant to you and what the song means to you and all the military that um, are highlighted in the video? Yeah, uh, so for me, I tried to join the military before I got into music. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wrote that song, it was like 6 a.m. and I just went and listened to it on my bed to see if I liked it. Um, something I do, I just keep replaying the, the songs in my head. And uh, afterwards, I was like, who else could relate to this song? Like, who's going to listen to this song? And the military popped into my head before anybody because they're never home. Mm -hmm. And so I told my, the guy that does, uh -oh. I told all the guys, uh, my camera guy, I told him that I wanted some of the military people in the music video. So he came out, he came up with mm -hmm. an idea of putting uh, a bunch of military people in the video. So I sent their come home, their homecoming videos. So that's all it's in the music video. So it kind of makes you tear up a little bit. And if you haven't noticed, I can't talk and play Call of Duty at the same time. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I'm with that struggle. Yeah. Well, I just killed two people, so hey. You're probably going to beat me. I, I don't know what's going on right now. These people play different. They're good. Um, so uh, that video does mean a lot to all the families and the people that are in it. Uh, how special was it to be part of that and, make, and, and seeing that your music does have an impact on these uh, people's lives? Yeah, uh, it means the world to me. That's kind of like why I feel like a bunch of artists do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so you can help people and you know do meaningful songs like that. Um, there's a lot of people that tell me like they come up with stuff to say that they want to say to the like their spouses or other yep. people, but they can never think of the words. So. If you have lyrics or anything that can relate to them, that can help them, you know, give out their message, I thought that's like the most important thing of this job. It's amazing the the impact that music does have to help people dealing with stuff that's going on with their lives and everything. How is Experiment different from your first album, King Ron? Um, oh, oh man, my first album, I, I kind of got rushed into it just because I got found on social media. Mm -hmm. um, so I came in, I got a record deal really quick, and. I didn't know what I wanted to say. I didn't even know how to write, really, at the time. So I just wrote what I thought people wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of just gave my background story of how I grew up. It was like the only thing I really knew how to talk about. So yep. this one, it was basically, I've already been torn for over two years with the new, with the, uh, my old album. Mm -hmm. So I decided to kind of make my live show a little bit better, make it a little more groovy, and uh, that's where we were going with this album and uh, I kind of just found my sound. I added some fiddle and some old school instruments that you don't hear that much anymore in country music yep. um, with a new school sound. And uh, to me, it came out great. So 
it's uh, it sold more than we did with our first album. Which yeah, the good. reception the reception of the album has been great. Like fans and uh, you're topping all the charts. Uh, so how has it been dealing with all that success and people just really really enjoying the work you do? Um, it's still it, it's still the same. Uh, we we got a lot more um, people who recognize us, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So you were mentioning earlier about how you first got into uh, music. And so is it true that you auditioned for The X Factor and was it American Idol? Uh, yeah. How was that experience? Was that how you first started? That's how I was trying to start and it never worked out. Um, that, that stuff, if, I mean, it helps some people, mm -hmm. but the majority of the time, it's just they, they know what they want. I'm wrecking right now. <laughs> um, so you kind of got to, yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't work out for me. But it, it was a fun experience, and I'll never take it back. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like a follow your heart moment. Because yep. they tried to put me in a boy band on the show one time, and I said no. And I just felt like I could do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And we did. So I think we want to do some uh, rounds of multiplayer, but this one will be all you. Do you want to try some Battle Royale Blackout here on Black Ops 4? Yeah, I'm pretty bad at Blackout. <laughs> we all want to see you being bad at Blackout. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played a lot of this game mode here? Um, no, I'm a level four. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> that answers the question. One of my best friends got me into this. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it feels very familiar, at least the feedback that I've been hearing for this game mode and me being, uh, having played it at home, it just brings that like fast-paced action that Call of Duty is known for. You can yeah. very easily pick it up, but it does get hard to master. And so I think that's the, the, the cool thing about, about this new game mode. Yeah, I'm not very good at it, but it's still fun to play. <laughs> So usually, how do you approach when you're... Because you were a big PUBG uh, player as well. So when you play Battle Royale games, like how do you approach it? Do you uh, first try to gather things and weapons and everything and then go after it? Or do you like to drop where everyone is dropping? And yeah, just... I'm easily go all in. I don't like <laughs> that camping. Uh, I hate camping. I hate campers. <laughs> That's the people who makes me scream at my TV. <laughs> Do you usually rage when you're playing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you do like to mix like country music, but with other uh, genres of music. So pop and R&B and hip hop. Um, how did you come to find your style now that you're like doing your own music? Uh, how, how, what was that discovery? Um, honestly, it just every, everything since my career just kind of came on its mm -hmm. own. Um, but it's cool, I just kind of just run with life and I really feel like that's how I kind of fell into doing all this uh, with my music. I just, I love music, like it doesn't matter what genre it is. Um, good music to me is good music and I mean you got all these award shows that are com combining artists, making them do songs together so it's like why not just have fun with it. Yeah, did you feel like it was a big risk when you first came to find your own style and your own music? Oh yeah, Every, everybody in Nashville thought it was a big risk, I feel like. So when you're in tour, uh, do you, I can imagine that uh, you have some stories, because everyone does. Do you have like a favorite story from you being on tour that you want to tell us? On tour? Yeah. Um, I don't know, I guess it would probably be the first time I had a song go number one, uh, my song What Ifs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was out on tour with Jason Aldean and um, it was the first time like a full arena that wasn't my show uh, sung back my song. So it was, wow. it was cool, it was a, a great feeling. Um, and you were recently in the Forbes 30 under 30 list as well, and that's a huge deal. Uh, how did it feel to be recognized in such a big way? Uh, it feels awesome because I was, I was jealous that Marshmallow was on the cover <laughs> and then I was like, dang, he's in Forbes, and then they put me in there. So it was, it was cool, and they quoted one of my, one of my little lines in there. So, what was the line? Uh, I was just saying, like, I'm not gonna change. You know, I'm not gonna change who I want to be uh, for like people to try and put me in a category. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be me and do what I like doing. And that's a life lesson, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I see that we have about 50 people remaining. So half of them are gone. You're doing a great job. Uh, 
I think that's a big thing in Battle Royale games, just like being patient, making sure that you do get all the equipment that we need. Uh, oh, when, oh, yeah, you said that. No, yep, uh, maybe I jinxed it. I forgot I'm actually to excited to see if you're going to make it now. I'm going to die. Are you? Yeah, I forgot. Oh, there they are over there. Do you have med kits? There you go. How do you use it, though? I forgot. OB. <laughs> oh, yeah, OB. Yeah. Sick. OK. Where did that come from? I think oh, it's behind right. you. Oh, right, No. He got you. How Was that like 49 plays? 18. 18? Yeah. OK, that was great. That was awful. That was actually, no, that was. I That's need my good. squad, Dusty. John, where y'all at? Get on. Do you usually play solo when you're playing multiplayer, or are you playing? No, I friends? always have a full match, and then I'll get on my Instagram if, mm -hmm. if none of my friends are on, which is rare. But I'll put on my my gamer tag, and I'll have a bunch of people come and play with me. No, oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, just for fun. Pretty cool. So you usually play with friend with your fans? Oh yeah, I have a lot of fans on my friends list that play with me, and uh, some will just come in and. Yeah, it's just, it's cool. It's like another way to interact with your fans. Yep. Have you found like any really, really Call of Duty, like good Call of Duty players among your fans? Uh, yeah, we actually have. And then um, the other day, I had a whole squad that was just all fans. I had one that I played with mm -hmm. uh, before. This was my second time playing with him. And I was like, we're going to kill it. We got a full squad and they come in. They're all level one on here. Uh, and I was oh, like, no. what, what are y'all guys <laughs> been doing? Y'all ain't even been playing. Yep. Like, they've been playing Blackout though, so. Oh, OK, I see. Uh, that's not all, though. We'll have a special guest joining us to talk about uh, the Call of Duty endowment right, and all the shadow. amazing right. ways they're Six helping like veterans get high-quality jobs. For a, job. a year. When they see the Marine Corps on my resume, their mind goes off into... Mindless drone. Brainwash. Uneducated. They don't want you diving under a desk if someone drops something. Hey, you're a Marine. Why don't you mop this floor? <laughs> you're in the military. Perfect. We have a security position. It's $9 an hour. You'll love it because you get to hold a gun again. We're not looking for special handouts. Uh, just a, you know, a little bit of a nudge in the right direction. Give me a chance. Let me prove myself. I cannot tell you how many times I heard this. Thank you for your service. That's always appreciated. It never gets old. It never gets old. Um, of course, uh, a job's better. Give them a chance. It's all about adapting and doing more with less in the military. So, you know, just give them a chance. So joining us to discuss the Call of Duty endowment is Dan Goldenberg. He's the executive di director for this charity. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Kat. Yeah, so Xbox has been working very closely, very closely with your charity uh, to support the veterans. Do you want to tell us more about what, uh, what the work you do and what the charity does? Yeah, so I'd love to. Uh, first of all, I want to say shout out to the Xbox uh, fans and players because in total, through our efforts to date, we just surpassed having placed 50,000 veterans in jobs. Wow. Uh, and we got, it, we got there about six months uh, prior to our goal. So the goal was the end of this year and we made it. Uh, and actually, we've just recently doubled down. Our new goal is 100,000 veterans in, in high-quality wow. jobs by 2024. So you could guess from that, our main focus is putting veterans in high-quality jobs. And for the vast majority of veterans, the best thing we can do for them to help them reintegrate after military service is getting them, helping them get into a good job, making them competitive in the job market. Um, and so we have this model where we find and fund the best organizations in the U.S. and the U.K. as well. That, that do this work. They counsel veterans, prepare them, uh, help them figure out what they what they want to do and how to be successful, uh, communicating their skills to employers. And we help them all the way from what do I want to do to actually getting ready for an interview and ultimately getting that job and being successful in it. Um, and so we, uh, through our model, we've, we've you know, placed again over 50,000 veterans, and we do it for an average cost of $516 per placement, which is actually one sixth the cost of the US government's efforts. So we're much more efficient, and the quality of these jobs, which is super important, mm -hmm. uh, are great as well. The average starting salary is uh, just, just under $58,000. 93% of these jobs are for full-time employment and 90% um, of the vets are in the jobs are still in those jobs six months later. Um, so it's not just quantity and cost, it's quality. Um, so we're really, really thrilled about this and none of it would have been possible without Xbox uh, fans and, and, and the organization. Well, it sounds like you are doing amazing work. So what are some ways that people at home can get involved with uh, your organization in the Call of Duty and Yeah, so there's a lot of ways. First of all, if you know a veteran who, who's 
you know, struggling for not just work, but good quality work, have them go to our website, calldutyendowment.org, and click on veteran support, and we'll link them up with the help they need. Um, so that's the, you know, the single biggest way. Of course, um, you know, we're really fortunate. Activision Blizzard covers all of our operating costs. So every cent we raise goes directly to the cause of putting vets in jobs. Very few charities are able to say that we are. So um, a great way to help is actually buy the, the Salute Pack, which is available in game. Uh, every cent of that goes, again, to putting vets in jobs. Um, so, you know, thanks to Xbox's uh, generosity with that and Activision Blizzard's uh, and the Call of Duty team, we've been able to do that. And it's a pretty, pretty awesome, awesome pack. Um, love the gesture, particularly. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then really, really neat, um, we have our new uh, avatar item, this badass bald eagle in the game yeah. uh, that's going to be a ton of fun uh, that's available in, in the Xbox avatar store. So we're, uh, those are great ways. And again, every cent of that goes back to putting veterans in jobs. And also, if people do buy the Salute Pack within Call of Duty, they will get a free Xbox Avatar item as well in their Xbox Live messages. Yeah, that's right? super cool. We're yeah. really excited about it. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining us here on the Xbox Live sessions today. Um, if you Thanks. want to support the Call of Duty endowment, go buy the Salute Pack on Call of Duty Black Ops 4. And lastly, like I mentioned before in the show, you can win a custom military-themed Xbox One X. Just retweet the original at Xbox post on Twitter for a chance to win. Thank you so much, Kane, for joining us. It was a lot of fun chatting with you and playing Call of Duty with you. Do you want to leave a message for your fans? Uh, I just want to say thank you for everything I've done for me. If you want to play with me, my gamer tag slide goes Rambo. OK, awesome. And thank you so much, Stan, for joining us uh, and telling us more about the Call of Duty Endowment. Do you want to leave a message for our veterans? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Uh, check out callofdutyendowment.org or check us out on Facebook or Twitter. It's uh, code, C-O-D-E, for number four, vets. OK, awesome. Thank you so much. This is all for Xbox Live Sessions today. Thank you for joining us.